Hi, my name is Kevin Miller, Best Line Equipment and Power Sports. I am the safety manager and trainer for the entire company. You might be thinking or asking yourself, why is a safety manager going to talk about snowmobiles? I'm standing between two nice snowmobiles, these are both 22s. The reason I'm going to talk about these is because I am an avid, diehard snowmobiler. I am a sled head. Okay? I've been around them since I was born. My dad got me into the sport. I have a passion for it and I enjoy snowmobiling. I actually ride any motorcycles too. And if I had to choose between the two, I would pick snowmobiling. It's, there's just nothing like riding a snowmobile. All right, so these are both snow check snowmobiles. So Players has a program where you can actually snow check a snowmobile uh, anywhere from about the first week of March through around tax day, April 15th. Okay, so you can basically build a snowmobile through Players not every little detail, but you can build it pretty much however you like to a certain degree. Different color options, uh, different shock options, different displays, different track options, and things like that. So again, these are both XCRs. This is an XCR 128 850. This is an XCR 850 136. Okay, I don't have a VR1 here to compare, but I will talk a little bit about the difference between the XCR and the VR1. Okay, so this particular model right here, the 136, everybody seems to think that this sled is totally redesigned over the axis. It really isn't, okay? Essentially, from the overstructure down to the suspension geometry and everything, this is an axis, all right? It looks way different. From the overstructure up, it's totally redesigned. New hood, new side panels. The XCRs specifically come with the Walker Evans high-low shocks. Okay, high-low dampening. And on the XCR, you get bearings installed in your shock ends where the VR1 will have bushings uh, instead of the actual bearing. So that's one of the pluses on the XCR. The windshield itself, okay, is a quick detach. So this one over here has just the uh, cover piece, all right, which is how a lot of them come. If you get the cover piece, you can get the hand guards with it. This one has the cover piece, but then the windshield installs this. There's five grommets that hold this windshield off, and you don't need any tools to remove it. All you have to do is pop it off. All the 850 snowmobiles, even back through the axis, when the 850 came out, and all the new 650 engines, and the Titan has what they call a power boosting regulator. The power boosting regulator delivers 500 watts at idle and startup. So they start better in cold weather, and if you're idling, you're getting all your voltage you need to run your hand grips and stuff, and your headlight. Okay, the headlight itself, night blade headlight. Six projector beams, actually incredible headlight. It delivers the precise light where you need to be at, at nighttime, okay? Very, very good headlight on it. Um, back here, the 7S display. Incredible uh, add to this and everybody's talking about it. it, is the best in the industry by far. Players nailed this. Okay, this transition from uh, uh, basically Indian motorcycles and the uh, Razor and Ranger off-road, but it's in the snow application now. It's a soft touch screen. It shows uh, navigation. It has a V2V ride, which means vehicle to vehicle, where if you have five of your buddies that have this display, it'll actually uh, show your buddies on here, okay, where their location at, so you can actually track each other. And that is vehicle to vehicle, so there's no cell phone needed. The biggest thing with the 7S display, it's, it's the talk of the industry, is the smart warmers. Okay? What that means is these hand grips, and we've all experienced it. If you're an avid snowmobiler, they're either hot or they're cold. Okay? With the new smart warmers, that's not going to happen. Because you have a low, medium, and high setting, all right, which a lot of them already have that. But you can adjust the temperature of the low setting, the medium setting, and the high setting. So essentially, if you have your low setting set at 100, and you're going across the lake, and the wind obviously was what cools things down, that's what makes your hands cold. If the wind's blowing on this side of this, this hand grip, on the left side, it will actually direct more voltage to this side to maintain that 100 degree temperature than it would voltage for this side, because this side doesn't need that much. That's why they're called smart warmers, and they work very, very well. Now, over here on this one, I just want to go over something here on this one. This one has a standard display, 
Okay, that has a 7S display. This one has a standard display. I get a lot of questions. Can I adjust my smart warmers if I only have the standard gauge? Yes, you can. No, it is not as easy, but you can go into this options and settings on this standard display and you can adjust the, the high, medium, low temperature of the hand smart warmers through this gauge too. It's just not as simple. That one, you just simply touch it, okay? The 7S display is great because you can actually touch that screen with gloves on, all right, and it works. All these controls right here, all right, you can control the 7S display right from here without taking your hands off the handlebars. So everything you want to do on this display can be done from right from this left-hand control. Okay, I said earlier, basically this is an axis down to the ground from the overstructure down. Where this machine shines is right here in the cockpit area of where the rider is. It's more of a rider forward, um, and some guys, I hear them say, even players, it's more of a dirt bike rider feel. That's the best way to explain it, okay? So this tank area is 4.8 inches narrower right here than what the axis was. The knee area is three inches difference. So what that transitions to is if you are coming in a corner and you need to transition for a fast corner, you literally slide up and out, okay? And, it, and the transition is much easier to do that over the axis. It's just, that's why the machine feels like it's totally redesigned and it's a totally different machine. It's because how you're riding the machine and how you transition in the handling side of it. Obviously, if you're in a left-hand corner, you want to keep the ski planted, all right? These are very flat cornering sleds, literally zero bump steer, okay? Best in the industry. So I'm going to go over some ads, the XDR heads. Everybody questions me, hey, what's the difference between XDR and a VR1? Okay, so we already talked about the Walker high-low shocks, okay, and the bearings in the shocks on the shock ends. That's, that's one of them. Underneath here, your jack shaft that runs from your secondary clutch over to the chain case, that's a solid hardened jack shaft on the XCR. So that's one of the pluses on here, another one. Down here, these are heavy-duty rail beams on the XCR over the VR1. You have your transfer blocks with the cross shaft here, which gives you rigidity support between your rails. The, okay, the VR1 does not have that. You have a heavy duty front torque arm, fourth idler wheel in the back. Okay, the VR1 has three. Track options. This one here has a Cobra 1352. Okay, again, this is a 136 length. On the X, XCR, you can get a, a, the Ice Ripper, which is an inch and a quarter with the studs pre-studded in the lugs. You can get the 1352 Cobra and you can get a 1.6 Cobra on the XCR. Under your seat, very nice option. Pull your seat off, it's that simple. Right here, some storage area. And a lot of guys might not know this, but Polaris actually makes an oil uh, container that goes down in here, mounts down in here, and it holds two extra quarts of oil which if you're on a long trip in Maine or whatever, and you're, you're going to ride three, 350 miles, it's nice peace of mind to have extra oil with. You can put a two-up seat conversion on any one of these. Okay, it mounts on here and it tucks in here. There's a cord in here that actually runs your heated grips for the passenger and things like that. Obviously, if you're going to be hauling two people on here, there's other spring options. So stock spring on here, your torsion spring, is rated for about 265 pounds. So obviously, if you're going to haul two up, they make a heavy duty and they make an extra heavy duty spring. Okay, all the XCRs come with a tether, all right? The VR1 does not. It's to each his own, okay? I have a lot of friends that bought VR1s. I have guys that uh, uh, bought XCRs. Um, I actually ordered an XCR for myself, and uh, I'm going to give it up because one of our customers' sleds got pushed back, and he's going to take my XCR when it comes in. Okay, if any of you have any questions on the models, the accessories, or what we have to offer, contact any one of our power sports stores, ask for a salesman, parts counter, whatever. They can answer your questions. If it's parts related, ask for parts. If you have a specific question about the snowmobiles, uh, it, okay, I'm at the power sports stores a lot. Ask for me, Kevin, or any of the sales guys, and we'll be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much.